Olson's uh, life and uh, and birth. Uh, we might be able to begin to see some few possibilities, I think, of hearing where we are at, at this time, which means to come back to that moment of the immediate, of the particular, of all of those things that avoid generalizing what we are, where we are, who we are, and still allows us to try to make sense of things some way. The idea that I'm working on as, as a way to work out of that possibility is that I'm, I'm writing a book entitled Abstraction. And it seems to me that one of the great mistakes and problems in the whole Western civilization was that generalization and abstraction were confused with one another or were seen as the same kind of thing. And certainly uh, the generalization and the abstraction that we knew for a very long time uh, were, went, went hand in hand, step in step. It seemed to me that what we uh, didn't know is that there was going to come a moment and as we became more and more abstract, as the possibilities of abstraction became greater and greater, that there was going to be a phase shift. You know, a phase shift is, you know, water cools and cools and cools and nothing happens and then, it, bam, it turns into ice. Or the, the butterfly or the worm suddenly, you know, turns into the butterfly. There are these moments of wild change. And we became more and more abstract and more and more general and more and more abstract and more and more general until uh, at the beginning of the 20th century we had the theory of relativity and quantum physics and so on, um, which looked like they were beginning to give us this picture of one total generalized and complete finished thing. Uh, but we went on abstracting. And at some point, the abstractions broke loose from the generality. And we began to have particularized kinds of abstractions, which instead of meaning that we had to simply remove ourselves from everything that we knew and turn back to a kind of state of stupid staring at the world, uh, we could actually know things, but didn't have to generalize about them. Uh, the great examples of these for me that I first started to be thinking about these uh, were uh, the paintings of uh, Jackson Pollock and uh, the music free jazz. Uh, it's very hard to think about how this is going to happen in language given the kind of structure that inevitably language has in it. I mean, language has that double fold based in the very center of, of grammar. Olson attempted very hard to break that open and with some success, uh, some considerable success. So there are long passages in Olson's poetry where you are in these moments of independently free abstraction uh, where you can, I mean, if it, if it were simply, simply the particularity, you couldn't say anything about it. But it can only it can not only be experienced, but it can also be spoken in these moments that where he's able to break loose and create these moments of freestanding uh, speech uh, with these complicated patterns, com complicated abstract patterns, but that do not necessarily have to implicate everything in the universe. That you can say something about a bottle or a chair or about a town uh, and uh, or about everything in the universe or about everything in the universe yeah, yeah. In, in, in a totally particular you know and, and in fact and, and you can say about everything in the universe and find that universe on a hill in Dogtown and um, so it seems to me that rather than Olson being someone that I'm interested in uh, looking back to with nostalgia or anything is to say that uh, it's a remarkable uh, example of what it means when you uh, really try to cut the cord and try to do something different. I mean, when you say, absolutely, I'm going to replace politics with culture, that, that's 
What's that mean? You know, I mean, you, you say something like that, and then, then you spend your life trying to figure it out. And uh, so I don't know whether that manages to announce a subject or not, but uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you.